All right. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, Rochelle Jones, Grief Recovery. <sighs> We've got our Luncheon Live 1145 today again. Um, hi, Cheryl. Thanks for joining. Um, we've got Instagram over here, Facebook going over here, and then I'll be posting it up to YouTube for you to watch later because these lives are only good for 24 hours. Um, and I don't know, there might be something we want to reference back to or share with our friends, and I think it's easier from YouTube. So thanks for joining. What is this, Friday, uh, July 19th? So goodness sakes. This is like the exact midpoint of the year or something. I don't know. It just kind of feels like it. So, um, all right. Well, are we ready? Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining. I, I, I just love that I get to spend this time with you guys and that you're willing to spend your time with me. So thank you. Uh, okay. So today I was curious about, oh, let me make sure this is on silent. Okay. So I was curious about your relationship to pain. Like, how do you feel about pain? It hurts, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we like it? Do you, uh, are you like, yes, I can't wait to have pain today? <laughs> yeah, probably not, right? Who is actually that way? Um, and so I was thinking about there are different, there are different types of pain, aren't there? And um, some types of pain we are kind of glad to have, aren't we? Uh, I was thinking if you're, if you, you know, you fall, like my son did, you fall and um, you have some kind of pain. Um, it's a signal, isn't it? It's a, it's a signal and we're grateful to have that pain. Hi there. Thanks for joining. Uh, we're thankful to have that pain telling us something's wrong, something's wrong. So we can get into the doctor and get an x-rayed and see, oh my gosh, there's a break there and get proper treatment, right? So we can set it and, um, if it needs to be set and cast it and mobilize it so it can just be still and really heal and, and protect it and, all those things, right? Or maybe if you have pain in your gut, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't. This is good. This isn't good. Something's not good. And we go into the doctor and we find out that we have appendicitis. And so it was like a great signal for us before our appendix ruptured, so we can have the proper action taken before it's turned into a bigger problem, right? So um, some pain, even though it's it's painful and we don't like it and it doesn't feel good at all. But we're grateful for those signals, right? It's a signal that something isn't quite aligned the way that it should be. And we've got to take some kind of action and it can save your life. And when proper actions are, are taken, then it, it's a gift. We're glad for that pain. Um, and if you ignore those pain signals, what happens when we ignore pain signals? Do good things happen when we ignore pain signals that our body is supposed to have. It's supposed to tell us that we've got a broken bone. It's supposed to tell us when you're full of infection, you need an appendectomy, you know, uh, you're, you've got pain, you've got an ulcer. So we've got to watch our diet. Hi there, thanks for joining, Sandy. Um, all right, so we're grateful for some pain. And if we ignore it, uh, dangerous things can happen, right? Uh, infection develops or if it like I, like I said if it's an appendix at first um, just nasty things happen when we when we ignore pain in our body right and it kind of turns into a bigger process a bigger problem maybe a life-threatening problem and so grief or your emotions are the exact same way really um, pain signals are there for a reason your heart hurts, you feel a lowered state of um, energy or lowered state of, you know, ability to concentrate, focus, uh, just, you just don't feel great. It, it messes up your sleep because just like the signal from a, a hand or uh, appendicitis, your emotions are also sending you signals. Something's not right, something's not right, something's not right. But here's the thing in society, we, pr we practice the myths. The don't feel bad, just replace whatever hurt your heart, um, grieve alone, give it time, keep busy, be strong. So we practice these myths, and what does that do? Much like ignoring physical pain in our body, it prolongs the process. And does it actually go better and, and get better? Does time make our wounds better? I don't know. Think about that first breakup you have. Maybe you're just used to holding on to it, but it's still there. 
you'll remember, oh, ah, that doesn't feel good, right? Uh, our emotional pain is much the same way as physical. And also, if we ignore it, it creates a bigger problem. It's, and then what happens to your life? So grief, your, your painful emotional feelings are cumulative, which means they add up and they're cumulatively negative. So they just keep adding up and adding up and adding up to bigger negatives. And we keep getting new ones. So we kind of turn ourselves into a, a shopping cart and we have something that hurts our heart. Maybe we're five and our dog runs away or dies. And then, you know, we didn't get to go trick or treating and that really hurts us. And, and then maybe our friends were mean to us on the playground. And so through the years we're getting bullied and then we have our first romantic relationship that doesn't, and then we don't make the high school, whatever team that we thought we would make. And we move and we're afraid and we have, a lot of change and then we don't get our dream job and you see what I'm saying we have a bunch of debt like things keep piling in and we never did pay attention to the pain signals from each one so we're just filling up filling up filling up like a grocery cart we're just throwing more and more and more in it and so what happens when you get to the um, have you ever had that like when your kids or you know you're just mindlessly putting stuff into the shopping cart and then you get up there and you're like oh my gosh I've got two carts. How did I even do that? And you've got to unload each and every item. And what happens? You just keep, um, let's see, I'm going to come back to that because that looks awesome, Sandy. Um, but you, you've got, oh my gosh, the job is bigger. You've got to unload it all. And then when you put it up there, um, holy cow, it's going to cost a lot more than we expected. And, and unresolved grief is a lot like that. It's, uh, it just keeps storing up. And then the price we're gonna pay gets bigger and bigger. And sometimes in really extreme cases, it's really hurting people and they're, they're completing suicide. They're taking their own life because they're, they're looking for a way to end their pain. And it's like the ultimate pain pill, essentially, right? And so we wanna, we wanna prevent that from happening. We wanna keep ourselves from getting there. We wanna keep our children from getting there. And if we think our kids are not being affected, we're wrong. They are being affected, and they just don't know how to talk about it, so they don't. Um, and it really just keeps building up. So what if, um, actually, I'm going to pause on that for a minute. So we have a question over here. It says, some grief you hold on to because when you let it go, there's a sense of guilt, like you don't care anymore. It can be conflicting sometimes. Girl, you are absolutely correct. That was really, really brilliantly stated. Um, and you are completely true and correct. A lot of people do have that same kind of mindset. And so here's something for you, a teaching moment. So guilt, we use that term guilt. In fact, I, uh, when I was an ICU nurse, I was part of the suicide awareness team. And then remember, I came to grief recovery because my father completed suicide. So guilt was absolutely a word that I used. I, would, I came in and I was like, I just, I just feel so guilty. And I was, I was torn up, but I would use that word guilt. And so, the dictionary definition of guilt is intent to harm. And so when we use that word guilt, the way that we're using it, think about the situation. Are we intending to harm someone when we use that word guilt? Most of the time we could say no. For example, uh, letting it go because of sense you don't want to feel as though you don't care anymore. You don't want to send that message that you don't care. So when you use the word guilt, are you wanting to hurt them? Of course not, right? You're not, you don't want to send the message that you don't care. But intent to harm. So if I didn't intend to harm someone, well, then guilt is not the right word for me. Guilt means I was wanting to hurt them. Maybe more like revenge. So if that guilt word doesn't work for you in that situation, you're not intending to harm I want you to take that big boulder out of your backpack or take that big, you know, lump out of your shopping cart because that's not correct for you. So you picked up something that doesn't belong for you and gosh, your grief is probably heavy enough already. So let's not add stuff that doesn't belong to you. So, but if there's something that you wish would be different about the situation, you wish you had a little bit more time or a little bit more connection. Uh, one more, I love you. Well, you wish something was a little bit better. Maybe it's kind of a sour situation. You wish it would be a little bit better. 
that there's something you wish would be different, better, or more about the situation, that doesn't mean guilt. That means grief. That's a definition of grief. We have unresolved grief. And if we want it to feel better, um, we've got to walk through that. So um, guilt's not the correct word if that's not for you. Um, and it's definitely conflicting because does it send the message of, I love that you sent this question in or this is common. So great. Um, does it mean that we don't love them? Well, we get afraid of that, don't we? And it's very scary. Does it mean that we don't care? It wasn't a big deal that you weren't important to me. And um, I'm going to tell you that it doesn't. In fact, when we, when we live in our pain, we're sending the message. It, it's so painful to bring it up, so we don't even really want to sit with the memories because it's so painful, and then we're conflicted because we have these people right here who need us, but we've got this pain going on that we want to sit with, but dang it, we can't because it's too painful, and it takes me out of the moment, and so we're conflicted like that, right? And so what is actually more honorable, a better way, a more effective way, a more productive way to honor a relationship that you wish could be different is to be able to sit with the memories and to find the joy and talk about all of it. What was it like for you? What was the person's name? What were your dreams and your hopes for the relationship? What did you think it was going to be like? We can actually move through the pain if we choose to um, resolve the grief that's hiding in there, the bits that we wish would be different, better, or more. And that's what my class is about. Um, okay, so going back to grief is cumulative and cumulatively negative. We just keep throwing stuff in the, in the pocket. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, or in our shopping cart, right? We're building it up and we're building it up. And we get to the register and it's huge. We've got this huge mess and we don't know what to do with it. And it's confusing and overwhelming. And what do I take out? And what do I leave in? And what do I put back on the shelf? Grief can be like that. When we resolve grief, we have a little bit of it. Or one situation happens and we're like, oh my gosh. It brings awareness to all these other moments that were hurtful too. They all seem the same. Hey, sister, thanks for joining. Um, and it just, it doesn't feel good, right? And so that's the benefit of walking through your pain. Now, here's the thing. I want you to consider this. So pain, um, just like the pain, oh, for goodness sakes, just like the pain of a, um, you know, a broken arm or a broken, uh, or an infection like appendicitis. We're grateful for that pain signal, right? Because it's telling us something's not right. So uh, we go in and we get, help from a professional who can look into it deeper and then take the appropriate actions or tell us the appropriate actions to take because it doesn't get better until we take the appropriate actions. So what if you looked at your, your broken heart the same way? What if you looked at your heartache the same way? It hurts because it should, because it's a signal that something's not sitting right. Something's not feeling right. It, it's, it's not okay. We don't like that feeling. So what if we looked at that type of pain also as a signal? What if we looked at it as a gift? And I know that sounds crazy. Our pain, we can, we don't like it. It, it doesn't feel good. We don't like our heart to hurt. But we can treat it as a box. A box with a bunch of layers. You know that game that we play around the holidays where there's a tiny little, there's a tiny little prize or something. And then it's wrapped in a million layers, and you've got to use your oven mitts to unwrap it. It was a timer, and you're passing it around, right? And layer after layer after layer, and then you finally get to the tiny little thing that's the little treasure that's buried inside. Our pain is actually like that. It's like it's like one of those, and we wrap it in, we wrap it in, but we have to be willing to unwrap it. And and so I'm going to show you how to do that. That's the that's what the class is about. I'm going to show you how to unwrap the layers, so you can find what's hiding inside. And when you do that, you actually receive a gift in your soul. It is not a gift that people die. It is not a gift that people um, leave us. It's not a gift that people hurt us or abuse us or, or abandon us. Those are not gifts. But if we choose to sit with our pain, we can find something in there. Maybe it's courage to put a new boundary in place. Maybe it's the idea of a new beginning. Maybe it's a lessened fear. Maybe it's a deeper connection with ourselves, our creator, our, our people around us. 
But until we are willing to sit with that big pile of mess wrapped up or that big shopping cart full of stuff, we can't find that one little treasure that's buried inside. So I'm asking you today to consider changing your mindset of what emotional pain is about because we shouldn't be running from it. We shouldn't be ignoring it. We shouldn't be suppressing it. We shouldn't be hiding it. We shouldn't be ashamed of it. There's something beautiful in there. I'll take you there. I'll show you how to do it. I know it's scary. It is scary. These classes can be scary. So let me walk you through. Let me do it with you. What kind of questions do we have popping up from that? Are you willing to maybe consider your pain as a, as a helpful signal of a new thing that needs to happen? Is that a possibility? Is it something you're willing to consider, to try, to trust me with? Um, I haven't had a complaint just yet, but there's always a first time. And I don't know many specialists who get them, to be quite honest. The, uh, the work of sitting with your pain, with that full shopping cart, with that, that ball of wrapping, it's, it's heavy, it's scary. What's going to be in there? Is it a snake? Is it a lizard? Is it a spider? Is it freedom? We don't know until we're willing to sit with the gift, the pain, the scary thing, and examine it and look at it and touch it just like we would if it were your, your appendix, right? If you come in, we're going to listen, we're going to touch and look at your responses and your reactions. We're going to do x-rays, we're going to do all kinds of things, maybe ultrasounds, we're going we're gonna to do all kinds of things to try to figure out what's hurting you. And then we're going to take very specific actions to help you through it. And what's on the other side? Freedom from the pain. Recovery. The most loving thing you can do. In fact, the definition uh, of um, uh, love, love, well, not the definition, but love is the product. Love is what you get from truthful communication. So being able to sit with your emotional pain and look at it and decide what it means for you and, and where the pain is hiding and then take actions to heal the bits of pain, that's actually what what comes of it is love. That's the point. Love for yourself, love for others, love for the relationship that's bringing you pain. You got to be able to sit with it. You got to be able to examine it. Don't push it away. Don't cling to your pain because it's familiar. We love familiar, don't we? There's comfort in familiar. We know what it feels like, even if it's scary and it's painful. Um, we love it. But if it's scary and painful, what kind of tact? Is that putting you under? What kind of stress is that adding to your life? What kind of stress is that adding to your relationships, to your mental clarity? How are you able to focus? How are you able to sleep? How are you able to eat? What kind of disease process is starting to grow because your chemicals are off with all that pain you're hanging on to? Emotional pain has absolutely huge physical consequences. What are you shortening? All right, what do we have over here? Getting started can sometimes be the most difficult hurdle. Well, that's absolutely the truth. Anybody else have a story about that? Cheryl says, I agree, Wes. Getting started is so scary. Who remembers getting started on something really scary and painful? For some reason, my mind just flashed back to riding a bike. Anybody remember riding a bike? Isn't that terrifying? You want me to balance in motion when the only thing to catch me is concrete? Don't you know what kind of danger that is? Back in my day, by the way, we didn't have, um, maybe we had them, but it wasn't required. Helmets and uh, wrist pads and knee pads and elbow pads and bubbles. We didn't have those. So it was scary. Um, gosh, I just pictured like toddlers starting to walk. They're not afraid at all, are they? <laughs> I love a childlike heart. So what kind of questions? Anything popping up, anybody have any type of feedback and awareness? Fear of failure is probably the scariest part. Oh, isn't that the truth? We don't want to fail. We don't want to, hi, Miss Jen, thanks for joining. We don't want to fail. 
We don't want to let people down. We don't want to, um, things to not work. But I tried and I put my heart out there and it didn't work. It's true. It's really scary. I can tell you that this process doesn't fail. It doesn't. Um, like I said, I've never had anyone go through and say, we shouldn't do that. In fact, I always get, why did I wait so long? Why didn't I do this sooner? The only thing you have to lose is your, your pain and the way your life's being affected. And scary is true. It's going to happen. That's why I don't leave you alone. That's why I don't say, here's a book, go do it. I mean, you can. You'll get uh, better results. Hey there, Marinelli. You'll get better. I'm sorry, Marinelli. I do it every time. I apologize for that. I don't know why I do it. <sighs> um, what you have to lose is your pain. But I want you to just start to maybe consider what would happen if I considered that heartache a gift, just like the ache in my gut when I have appendicitis. It's a gift. It's a signal. Girl, get some help. Get yourself a doctor. Get yourself a specialist. We need to take some action here. Do that with your heart. Let's see. What does Joan say? Uh, ask yourself what you're missing if you don't try. Yeah, that's, that's so true. Missing all kinds of things. Um, connection, deeper connection. For me, uh, my whole life's purpose is to uh, connect with myself, to connect with my creator, to uh, connect with my loved ones, to connect with others. But also, since I am so passionate about that and I love it so much, I want you to learn how to do it too. I want you to connect with yourself, your creator, your belief system, your family, your children, your spouses or romantic partners, your, your friends, your job, your own purpose. I want you to connect with that. So that's what I do. That's what I, that's what I teach you. Um, so what are you missing? Your purpose, probably. Your freedom your connection, your love. Um, I shared I shared to my Silverth group. I know there are so many other moms that need to hear this too. Sandy, thank you. Thank you. By the way, Sandy, did you have a name for her? I'm curious. You get to say her name very often. Sometimes that's pretty helpful too, just to start right there. Um, thank you for sharing your story a little bit right there with other people who might need some direction and some help too. Um, and just with all of us here. Thank you. Uh, okay. What does, what is happening over here on Instagram? It says, how do I see that? It says, once you get your belt, let's see, ask yourself what you're missing if you don't try. And then Cheryl says, try it. Try it afraid. That's right. Just be scared. Get it anyway. Start anyway. Do it through your fear. Who cares? Be afraid. You can still get started. And then uh, Wes, my husband over here, says, once you get your balance and feel, feel free on your bike, it's all worth it. Then he also says, sex is much better when you're recovered, too. That's true, actually. Uh, your sex life can improve a lot. Your relationships can improve a lot. When you are recovered, when your emotional weight is lower, just a side effect there, kids. Um, let's see. Sergeant Marinelli says, Hey, Kate, Sean and I were talking about you guys last week and how I miss you guys when I was with them. <gasps> awesome. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. It's nuts. We live right here in town. Why are we not seeing each other? That's kind of weird. Anyway, um, so Instagram's got some noise over here. Let's see. Um, everyone's interested in that, right? Oh, better sex life. That's what I'm hearing. That is a, a result of emotional freedom and maybe good now, but let me tell you, you can, you can always do better. Let's see. Uh, hi, Gabs. Thanks for joining. There are so many circumstances I can't wait to experience this, says Cheryl over here. And I got a thumbs up. Awesome. All right, you guys. I love you all. I'm thankful for you. Thank you for spending your time with me and joining me. And I hope that you'll take this and you'll hear it and you'll start to think of your pain. Um, in a different way, because you're not meant to live a life of pain. It's, it's keeping you from deeply connecting with those around you, but even yourself and even your, your deeper, greater purpose in life. Uh, we have a greater purpose than to just be here and to just sit with our pain. Pain is supposed to be a signal. 
Things are going to happen that are going to hurt us, but they shouldn't be a, a weight and an anchor. And I mean a, a wink and anchor, a wanker. Huh. Anyone from UK? Well, I apologize for that. Um, anyway, I love you all. Thank you for being here with me. Uh, send in your questions, either PM me here, email me, call me, text me, whatever you got. Uh, add in comments as we go. I love to hear from you. I'm so thankful. I appreciate your questions and your comments. Thank you for being, Cheryl, thank you. Thank you for amazing comments. I have had the most beautiful comments from this woman lately that I haven't been able to respond to yet, but thank you for that. Um, Jen says, it's exhausting to live with the weight of pain and to try to pretend it's not there. <sighs> yes, it is. It kind of, I mean, if you think about pain, emotional pain is like a backpack full of rocks and boulders and pebbles and heavy, right? And every time a new piece of pain happens, a new painful experience happens, we throw more rocks and boulders and stuff in. And so my backpack's getting heavier and heavier and I'm navigating life. And I don't know about you, but this stage of my life, I'm moving at a more rapid pace, the age of my kids and everything. And so the faster I go and the heavier my backpack in it is, what do you think happened? I'm exhausted. I'm worn out. And how do we respond? I mean, married people or people in relationships, we know it's not a good plan to have deep talks and whatever, just talks at all when we're exhausted, right? It's not a great plan to navigate all of your life when you're exhausted. So do what you can to help yourself and re release yourself from being weighed down by an overloaded backpack full of pain. That's what I'll show you how to do. I've got two-day classes coming up, um, a September 1, October 1, and a November 1. And then I have the traditional one-on-ones and uh, groups always going. So I'm always loving to have you. The groups are always um, in person. One-on-ones, you can meet online, live, just like this. And I will walk you through the process there. And um, the two days are also in person. So if that seems like one of those would work for you, I'd love to have you. Let me know if you have questions, concerns, thoughts, comments. I love you, and I will see you next week, Lunch and Live at 1145. Bye, everybody.